Fragile X syndrome is a genetic condition that is associated with developmental disabilities like autism, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, intellectual disabilities, and learning disability. Fragile X is caused because the body produces less amount of a protein called the Fragile X Mental Retardation Protein or FMRP. This protein is very important for helping the brain develop and for helping the brain grow. In individuals who have a genetic condition that does not allow for this protein to be produced in adequate amounts, they may have difficulties with learning, they may have intellectual disabilities and developmental delays that are noticed right from the time of childhood. Chances of a male member with Fragile X syndrome having intellectual disability are higher. This is because of the way in which the genes are inherited. The way in which Fragile X syndrome may present in females or women or girls is that they may have learning difficulties but may actually have intelligence as measured by standard IQ tests that falls within the average range. The learning styles of individuals with Fragile X syndrome is also different. They tend to learn in pictures. They tend to learn visually better than through language. And once again, this is really important to remember as one works with a child with Fragile X syndrome because this can again play a very important part in school. So individuals with Fragile X syndrome have the same life expectancy as anybody else. They grow up to have interests, pursue a livelihood, uh, educate themselves just like many other people in the community. And this depends on early identification and early intervention services that these children receive in addition to support and understanding from the community as well. And therefore, it's really important to know from very early on that a child has fragile X to provide the child with the services that they need and to build a community of people around the child that understands the condition and is supportive of the child's needs. Children with Fragile X Syndrome can lead very productive, fulfilling lives just like anyone else in the community. Uh, they can go to school, they can learn, they can make friends, they can grow up to be adults who are productive, who have a livelihood and who have a circle of people around them who understand them and would like to engage with them. In fact, children with Fragile X or individuals with Fragile X are known to have a very unique sense of humor. And those that are close to them, who know them well, will often attest to the fact that this humor actually plays a big part in their relationship and helps them connect with each other. Children with Fragile X syndrome can be uh, identified because of certain physical traits that they present and also certain developmental traits that they present. The physical traits are as follows. You can see a child who has a larger sized head. You may be able to notice that they have ears that are larger in size. Their palate, which is the roof of the mouth, is more higher in terms of its positioning. They may also be at a higher risk to have recurrent ear infections. Some of them may have hernia. And it is important to piece all these signs together when one notices them. They all represent a pattern. Likewise, children with Fragile X syndrome may also have certain developmental traits. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, the way in which they communicate, the way in which they may behave may be very unique. For example, uh, when you hear a child with Fragile X syndrome talk, you will often notice that their speech is very fast paced. They tend to string together words very rapidly. Sometimes this kind of a speech can be called a cluttered speech. Um, children with Fragile X syndrome can uh, sometimes find it hard to stay on topic and they may need to be brought back to the topic again and again. The amount to which that they speak 
can sometimes be affected by their anxiety in social situations. So you may not find them to be very talkative in different social situations. In fact, they may become really quiet and they may avoid any kind of eye contact. However, you do have to remember that they may have a much larger vocabulary that they understand. So in effect, they may understand a whole lot more than you're able to see them speak. They may also find it hard to follow instructions that are multi-step in nature or are complex in nature. And these kinds of instructions may need to be broken down for them. Uh, many children with Fragile X syndrome have their unique strengths. They are able to instantly get the big picture of a story that's presented to them. However, when information is presented more sequentially, that may be harder for them to make sense of. Um, uh, and, and these are some things for educators, teachers, parents who work with children with Fragile X for them to remember. Uh, children with Fragile X syndrome may have intellectual disability, which means that their learning in classroom setup at home needs to be supported in specific ways, in special ways. Um, many of them may also have anxiety which may make it hard for them to learn things in group situations or in situations which are unpredictable, unfamiliar or new. In addition to this, one of the key things that children with fragile X often find a challenge is uh, to, to regulate themselves. Now what do I mean by that? All of us have senses in our body. These senses include our vision, our hearing, our sense of touch, our sense of smell, uh, a, a broad sense of where we are in space, where we are sitting, where we are standing, etc. And these sensations or these senses send information to the brain, which allows the brain to make sense of the world outside. Sometimes when this information is sent chaotically to the brain, the brain tends to become really anxious. And this is something that children with Fragile X syndrome often struggle with. Therapists like occupational therapists play a very, very important role in helping children with Fragile X learn how to use their senses to make better sense of the world around them. And this can be a very important part of what is done in an occupational therapy session for the child. Children with fragile X can also have certain organs of their body which need close monitoring. For example, they may have a heart murmur. Some of them may also have fits or epilepsy which needs additional treatment. Because fragile X and autism are so closely interrelated, one often finds that once a child is identified with fragile X syndrome, the pediatrician or the developmental pediatrician look for signs of autism. Likewise, the reverse is also true. Once the diagnosis of autism is made, one often finds that the developmental pediatrician will make a recommendation for genetic testing for fragile X. The reason for this is, while there is an overlap between these two conditions, there are also specific strategies that one uses for Fragile X syndrome that is very important to know about. And therefore, whenever testing for Fragile X syndrome is recommended, please follow your doctor's advice and do get the test done. So when signs of Fragile X syndrome are noticed by your pediatrician, they may ask you to get your child tested for Fragile X syndrome. This test is often in the form of a blood test. Once Fragile X syndrome is confirmed, then the, your pediatrician or your developmental pediatrician will then put you in touch with a group of uh, intervention specialists. The developmental pediatrician in their first meeting with you will spend a lot of time going through the features of Fragile X syndrome with you and your family. Specifically, they will also advise the parents as well as the siblings to get tested. The reason for this is because parents and siblings can often be carriers of the Fragile X gene. When they are carriers, they may not show the symptoms in the same severity but they may have other features that can often be helped that can uh, that will off and they may benefit from intervention 
For the child who has fragile X syndrome, the developmental pediatrician will do a detailed assessment which includes looking for the child's strengths, what they're good at, but also looking at other areas of development to see how they are moving around, how is their balance and posture, uh, do they need support in eye-hand coordination tasks, do they need support in everyday activities like feeding, toileting, dressing, do they need support in speech. And for each of these areas, they will put you in touch with specialists like occupational therapists, speech therapists, and later, as your child goes to school, to special educators. Sometimes both caregivers as well as the child may need additional mental health support. Fragile X syndrome often increases the probability of both the children as well as their caregivers experiencing anxiety. In such situations, it can be hugely beneficial to meet mental health professionals or when required, a psychiatrist for specific medications. And this can actually help improve the quality of life both for the child as well as the caregivers. If you found this video helpful, please like the video and also subscribe to our channel.